Hi everyone, I'm Grey Chow. Welcome to my video tutorial. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use digital blending technique to recover an overexposed sky, or you can call this as exposure blending or exposure recovery. Taking photos during the sunrise or sunset time can be tricky because the sensor in our camera has a certain range of data that is able to capture between the shadow and the highlight, which is known as dynamic range. A camera has a higher dynamic range able to capture more detail of the scene without overblown the highlight or underexposed the shadow compared to a camera with a lower dynamic range. Still, even using the camera with the highest dynamic range that you can get on the market, it is still unable to capture all the detail in one single photo, especially when the lighting condition is too intense, which is why your photos of the sunset always got an overexposed sky. To resolve that, you can either use a graduated neutral density filter, which is known as GND filter, or taking bracketing shots and then doing the exposure recovery for the sky in the post-processing layer. That's what I'm going to share with you now. This video will be focusing on the digital blending technique. But in case you are interested in how to take bracketing photos, you can check out my previous blog post. I will include the link in below video descriptions. So back on the digital blending. As you can see, I already have my Adobe Lightroom opened and with three photos imported in my Lightroom. From the right one here, which is the one that I'm selecting now, is the brightest photo and it's a plus two stock exposure brighter than the normal exposure. So for the next one here, you can see that it's much darker and this is the zero exposure photo. This is also the photo that I'm going to use to recover the sky. But even using this photo, you can notice that there's still some slight overexposed area in the highlight here. This is why I this is why that I use another additional photo, and that's the third photo. This is the minus two stops exposure photo, which is the starkest photos among the three. And you can see that I'm able to capture the detail of the highlight here. So before we start to do digital blending in Photoshop, the first thing we have to do is some adjustment on the photos first. So now let's go to the develop module here. And I'm going to start using this the brightest photo because this photo will be the base photo, which is the one that I'm going to use it and use the, the, the foreground here and also from here to do the exposure recovery to recover the sky. So the first thing that normally I'm going to do before I start doing any editing is to go to the sorry to the lens correction here and make sure that these two options are checked. So it's already checked and normally once you check the, the enable profile collection, the light brune will automatically identify that which lens that you are using for this photo and to correct the distortion and also the reenacting for the photo. But if the light brune unable to find out which lens that you are using, you can choose manually from the drop down list here. This is the brand and this is the list of the lens for that brand. Now the next thing I'm going to do is that you may notice that there's the photo is distorted and you can see that the building is not straight. So this is because that I tilted my lens to include more sky in my frame. And I'm going to solve that by going to the transform here and just zoom in and I'm going to use this guided upright tool. Just Click on it and what I want to do here just draw a straight line on the building. And then the next one from at this corner I draw another line here. Just follow the building lines and just zoom up. And you can see that distortion is corrected. So make sure that you also have this constraint cropped checked. 
so that will call automatically for you and just click on the guided apply to again to be back now I already have the distortion corrected and I want to make sure that the same adjustment is applied on every other photos so what I'm going to do now is to choose the other two photos and I'm going to click on the same make sure that only the lens correction and transform are selected and just click synchronize so the same adjustment we're going to apply to all these three photos here now I'm going to do some basic adjustment for the photo before I move them into Photoshop I'm not going to do the adjustment for this photo here because I think the exposure is quite good now if I want to do any further enhancement I'm going to do it later in Photoshop which is going to be better so now let's let's move to the next one here and which is the photo a lot darker than the previous one and what I'm going to do here is to brighten the photo by pulling up the exposure slider here and then shadow and recover the highlight here I think that too much so trying to get the exposure as say as close as this so that I can blend it naturally later when I do the exposure recovery Brighten it a little bit here okay, That should do the job and then Repeat the same step for the third photo here, the last one, the darkest one. In case you may wondering why don't I just use this photo and to brighten the, the shadow area and just to process it. And the reason why I don't do so is because of the image quality. If you zoom in, you'll notice that there are a lot of noise here. And even though I try to brighten the shadow area, you can see that they still have some area that is not recoverable and yeah it's very noisy so this is why that I don't like to use I don't like to take a very underexposed photo and recover the shadow so let's lower down the exposure back so now I got the three photos ready Let's just select all of them and then right click Go to edit in Open as layers in Photoshop Once all the three photos are loaded in Photoshop The first thing I'm going to do here is to rename them So let's start with this The brightest one here I'm going to rename it as foreground and then the middle one here which I'm going to use this for the sky so I'm going to rename it as sky layer and the top one here to further recover the highlight effect here I'm going to call it as sky 2 as for now let's just hide this sky 2 layer and focus on this sky layer here because we're going to do the the exposure recovery using this layer so the first thing that we're going to do here is that I'm going to create a black mask so while holding down the auto button on the window or auction button on Mac click on the layer mask icon here you see there's the black rectangle created beside the thumbnail here and that's the layer mask and um, what I'm going to do now is to using the brush tool and 
make sure that this white color is selected and the opacity will be 50 percent and let's zoom out zoom in a little bit and adjust the brush size i'm going to start to brush on the sky to recover the highlight and then i'm going to use a much smaller opacity 25 percent a smaller brush at the edge here apply more on the sky and zoom more the sky you can apply more the reason why I keep changing the opacity and brush size is to create a smooth transition so that the result will look more naturally by holding down the alternate button or option button on Mac click on this masking here you see the, this is how the mask look like now click on the mask again while holding down the alternate button to back to the normal view for most cases you will be able to recover the sky using only two photos which is what we are doing right now and before we move to further recover the highlight here there's another way to do the blending instead of using the brush I'm going to reset what we have done just now to so make sure that using the black colors and with the layer mask selector and and press on alternate and delete button for Mac will be option and delete button and as you can see now the mask is filled with the black color again so basically we are resetting everything so the next step instead of using the brush tool I'm going to use a gradient tool so click on the gradient tool and 100% opacity and also this time make sure it's the white color and while holding down the shift button, I'm going to draw a line here and then let go just like that and before, after, before, after and let's check on how the mask look like it's very smooth transition from 100% effect to 0% so back to normal view again now we're going to go move to the sky 2 layer here like what we have done for the sky layer so we are going to create a black mask so again holding down the alternate button or option button for Mac click on the layer mask here and to create a black rectangle but the black rectangle is selected this time choose the brush tool white color and opacity go for around 15% and make sure that using a soft edge brush so that the, the result look more natural now zooming on this highlight area just the brush side there's the dust here let's ignore, ignore it for now and just paint on the area that you want to cover a little bit here so that we can blend in seamlessly and here After. Before after. too much here so if the effect is too much so what we're going to do now is to change to black color and just remove all the result all the effect here okay much better and let's check the before after here before after before as you can see now we have successfully recovered the overexposed sky and from here we can further enhance the photo by applying any other editing that we want for example contrast adjustment sharpening saturation or noise reduction so that's all for this video tutorial. I hope you like it.
if you got any question feel free to leave me any comment below